Hi. So today Hi. we have Meredith Patterson with us. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you so much for being here. Of course. Thank you for having me. I'm so happy to be here and to just, you know, kind of talk about all this stuff. Yay. I love it. Okay. Can you please do an introduction? So I, I will not do you just your career justice. So please introduce yourself for those of you who don't know who you are. Okay, uh, for people who don't know who I am, I, I guess I'm I'm known as a, um, a, a Broadway star, as you said, Michelle, which I'm like, I still don't like feel that way. But uh, I, I, to most people I'm known as, um, I was the second Peggy Sawyer. I took over after being the understudy on Broadway in the uh, 2001 revival. Uh, and I was Peggy Sawyer for a year on Broadway and was awesome. It was like dream, dream, dream show. Uh, before that, I did another Broadway show with Julie Taymor, which only lasted for seven weeks, <laughs> which was awesome. Uh, and then um, there was a few years in between that I did lots of lots of regional stuff and TV and film. Um, I got a chance to debut opposite Candace Bergen and Tom Selleck um, on Boston Legal. Awesome. No pressure. Uh, <laughs> awesome. Then, uh, I did the soap opera All My Children for a long time. And then finally, my last thing I've done on Broadway uh, so far um, it was Judy Haynes in White Christmas, which um, was a part that I originated, which is like, you know, of course, again, everyone's dream is an actor. So that's kind of my resume in like a short awesome. version. <laughs> totally. And um, you were awesome, by the way. <laughs> I saw you. You were great. Um, and 42nd Street and uh, White Christmas, which is the best show ever. I'm sorry. I'm a little biased. As a tap dancer, that's all. That's like, what I started doing when I was two and a half. Like literally I started walking and then I started tapping. Awesome. So for me, those two parts, and I really think a lot, of, a lot of it had to do with timing and luck, but the fact that I was the age that I was and I had the skills that I had, and then that big show came along. Awesome. In fact, I was just in touch with the, the lead producer, Joop Vandenend, who is a um, producer from Amsterdam. And he is the one who put all the money, not, not alone, but with the Dodgers for 42nd street. Oh yeah. And it was such a huge show that I don't feel is done in that grand scale anymore. Totally. But oh my God, what a way to like do your have your first Broadway musical, which was mine. I mean, it was awesome. just <laughs> in the chorus, and you're understudying, and then they're like, "Here, now you're the lead," and you're like, "What?" It was <laughs> awesome. It was great. Awesome, awesome, awesome. <laughs> so I knew about uh, you and about I'm trying to think, I forget how I, I you were my Peggy Sawyer in Forty Second Street. That's the first time I heard about you. But then I heard about your survival job a while ago, and I yeah. thought that was awesome, and it was such a great idea. So when I started this podcast, I was like, I need to talk to Meredith Patterson because oh. <laughs> because so here my always preach. I'm looking at my notes because I always preach like you. You get to a point in your career where you actually want to shape like a career. You just don't want to have to take a job for the job or back in my day, like for the health insurance or just to have a job, right? So like how did your survival job come into play with that? And like what was your experience? Well, I mean, people know me as being in 42nd Street and it's not like I moved to New York and all of a sudden I was in 42nd Street. Like I, it took me eight years to get there. I oh, was yeah. in New York. For a long time before then and I was coat checking and I was doing promo jobs I was like standing outside of like the Today Show with peppermint patties yes. like handing them. like I yes. did all that stuff totally. I've done I've done retail I've done and the coat checking I did for at the rainbow room which is like not nice. kind of what it used to be but I mean I stood there with a pillbox hat and like checked everybody's coats but I was doing all these jobs that were in between, you know, auditions and things like that. Mm -hmm. They weren't anything that limited me from auditioning, which I really recommend. But they also weren't anything that I was building any sort of, like, money. Like, it was just getting me by. I was not in any way saving anything. I don't think I had a savings account till I was in 42nd Street. Yeah. Um, and that is that is a problem because, because like anything, um, you should have, you should constantly have income coming in. Yes. And as actors, it's like, how do you do that? And then also be able to audition and also be able to physically audition because if you're mm. working, let's say a bar or waitressing till two in the morning, then you got to get up and do a 10 a.m. dance call. Yes. You're screwed. Like that's, it, yes. it's so, it's literally the most frustrating thing I think about being an actor in this business is trying to bring that in. So, Cut to, uh, I didn't know about Arbonne until 2007. They've been around for a long time. Um, 
you know, my mom did Avon. So I was like, what is this? I called it Arcone. I didn't even know what this was. I was yeah. like, what? And nobody also, when I found out about it, nobody was buying anything online. It was really foreign to buy stuff online. Yeah. It wasn't something that, you know, like now, like you have Amazon Prime and people buy everything online. In fact, right. people shop mostly online than they do, you know, battling crowds. But long story short, I was, I wish that I learned about it when I was doing a Broadway show. I wish yeah. that I learned about it when I was doing 42nd Street because mm -hmm. it was something that I could then build on in terms of residual income. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, to kind of touch on that, I mean, that's kind of why you do TV and films because you constantly get paid every time it's, it's being played on TV or networks. And what... Arbon is, and I didn't know anything about it at the time. Yeah, uh, it's network marketing, and a lot of people are like, well, "I'm not gonna get involved in that." Like they don't really totally. know a lot about it. But if the more research you do on it, it makes so much sense. And I, I always kind of parallel it with the networks playing your episode of Boston Legal every, you know, 13 week cycle, and then yeah. you get a. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like that. That's the network part of it is that it's your network is shopping from your store. Right. And you get a percentage of it. Um, that's like the bare bones version of it. Right. But I, again, back in 08, when I learned about it, I was like, no, 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 I don't need to do this. Yeah. I'm doing good. I, I have, you know, I have a steady stream of, of income. And when I say survival jobs are all about perspective, there's some people who, really don't need to do a survival job. Like mm -hmm. people who are Broadway, I, I say Broadway stars who are <laughs> like, who don't, don't need to have any supplemental income, mm -hmm. but I think still should right. because you never know in this industry, you it's not know. about your talent. It's mm -hmm. not about your anything. You could drop out and you have nothing, especially theater people yeah. because you don't have that TV and film residuals yeah, and I'm kind true. of on a tangent now but I mean there's so true. I never even so thought about much. it that way even for tv you know I'd say I come from a musical theater background and it's that's true it's not like you're doing tv and film and you get the check like literally when your show is done your show is done and yeah and the your other oh your income's done and the yeah. other hard part about it is like say you find a great temp agency or a great um promo agency to work with like mm -hmm. you can only work when you're not auditioning or when you're in yeah. town. If you're yeah. out on a job or if you go out on the road for yeah. months at a time, like you can't work a survival job, but yeah. well, a, a normal survival job. But I mean, I remember sitting in Denver in my gorgeous, uh, you know, I had in my own apartment on 16th Street. When, when I was yeah. doing White Christmas at the Denver Center. And the best... I was say, the Denver Center. That's what I was like, my favorite, like, my awesome. favorite show in the favorite the city in the world. Like, I was bored out of my gourd for, like, eight hours a day because yeah. what was I supposed to do? I was in a new city. I mean, I had to prep for my show, but, like, I could have... I wasted so much time. Like, I could have done something to work to uh, oh. for my, like, side hustle. And I'm just looking back going, oh, my gosh, I wish I would have known, you know? I know. It's so, it, it, it is one of those things that, like, that is that is why I, I love this Survival Job for Actors website that you have, like, Thanks. that you're really kind of, like, giving information to people who I didn't know anything about this when I first started out. And oh. even when I first heard about Arbonne, I was like, nobody's doing this. No <laughs> one's doing any sort of side hustle. No one's, like... And I don't want to, and a lot of it was like, I don't want people to think of me as like the makeup girl or the skin girl or the Arbonne girl. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that's another side of it. But, but the truth is the honest truth is that, and this is another layer to it that a lot of people don't think about. Yeah. You're buying this stuff anyway. You have to have <laughs> stage makeup. Nobody's, no one's giving you stage makeup. Even when you're on Broadway, like right. it's rare that you get like, you know, a free makeup unless you're doing like specialty makeup or something like that. Yeah. So you're buying this anyway. Right. You have to take care of your body. You got to buy, you know, like the nutritional stuff uh, okay. from our or or even like other ones that like Beach Body or things like that. Yeah. Like whatever, whatever your jam is. Yeah. Like mine is just Arbon. I love yeah. it. I've loved it as a, a customer, and so being a consultant for it like makes so much sense. And it, and it so you're buying it anyway. Not, not why not buy it from yourself and then get a, get a discount. Great discount and then <laughs> go kind of build. You know, you also, depending on your, your salary or your, um, your volume. So it's like, if you're doing any sort of retail job, mm -hmm. it's depending, it's all dependent on your retail volume. So depending on your um, volume, depends on your, your, um, percentage that you get. And then you've got, you know, 
this great team of people that can work with you that you get to train. Mm -hmm. So there's all of that, which is, you know, I don't want to go into like the detail details, yeah. because it's super, but, but in terms of like, like you being in Denver for like eight hours and like having nothing to do right. like, during the day, especially for, Yeah, especially when you're in a regional show and you have, especially when you're out of town and you maybe don't know anybody, you don't know what to do. You have all these, all these hours to kind of kill, as mm -hmm. we say. Yeah. And, you know, where you're making money, hopefully you're making good money in a regional show. But oh, you, yeah. need to, you need to forward think to, I should be building like a client list. And whether you're, you know, like I said, my thing is Arbon. whether your thing is something else, there's a mm -hmm. ton of a ton of like multi-level marketing companies or online things, or maybe, you know, maybe your thing is like you, I don't know, do something else. Maybe you've made your own face stuff. Like, and you're, uh, that's like a whole nother. Selling uh, like your own. So no, like literally you can write eBooks on Amazon and like post them for exactly. Kindle. Like it's so easy if, um, yeah. if you want to choreograph something and then like license your choreography off to other people, like high school, uh, yeah. high school students, like, for high school shows, because I know a lot of my friends choreograph their high school shows. I'm like, why don't you license that to other people? Like, you're already choreographing it. Seriously, it's, like <laughs> it's the business part of it's the business part of show that we don't really pay attention to a lot as as actors, and that's okay because like we spend so much time training and so much time like you know. perfecting ourselves as triple threats and all these things that we're like, oh my god, I just want to relax. I don't want to have to think about like doing something else. Right. But the truth is, is that we don't, we're not in a business that's really secure. And if you are the 1% of the 1% and you get into that like niche of yeah. like having like, you're like in modern family, like on TV or friends or yeah. something like that, where you're like, oh my God, this is going to go into syndication and I have, you know, residual income the rest of my life. This is awesome. I can do whatever I want. And totally. that happens, which I hope it happens to everybody. Totally. More power to you. Like, that's awesome. <laughs> But like, think like an entrepreneur, think about yeah. how can I build a business that is going to pay me in between the nooks and crannies or the cracks of my career. Mm -hmm. So that when your reps go to you, okay, so now you've started on Broadway. So now you can't take understudy jobs. Now I don't want you in the chorus anymore. Now you can't, you know, audition for this and that. And so you're sort of in this funnel of competition and you're like, oh my God, I have to turn down. I mean, right after 42nd Street, yeah. I had just started Broadway and they told me, no, you can't take any understudy gigs on Broadway. Oh, and wow. I was like, oh, okay. So now that I've, cause you can't, it's kind of like in, in that world, your reps don't want you to go back and forth mm -hmm. from being a lead on Broadway to then being in the chorus or yeah. covering because in this, and I hope this changes because it, I don't know, that's a whole nother subject, but <laughs> They, they somehow don't see you because you're a product. They don't see you as a Broadway star if you're mm -hmm. understudying or if you're back in the chorus. Makes sense. It's such, I hate it, but it's kind of the way the business is. Yep. So in terms of you wanting to, so for those of you out there who's like, I've just started on Broadway or I just got my first gig. Yeah. And now your agents are like, you need to go to pilot season. <laughs> you need to not do a regional show from January through May mm -hmm. because of the fact that you have to be available for pilot season auditions. Mm -hmm. And you're like, uh, I can't wait or I can't, or I'm in LA. And right. I'm, like, what do I do? What do you do? You need to, what do you do? You need to have entrepreneurial type of job. And I find that something like Arbonne is great because you can take it with you wherever you mm -hmm. have a laptop yeah. and your mouth basically is what it is. So if you can find mm -hmm. something like that, or you can create something like that, yeah. um, do it, do it, especially when you've got money rolling in and you're like in a Broadway show and you've signed a year contract and you're like, great, start building yeah. something like that. That's yeah. my like biggest advice to people who are just now starting is to really do that. So anyway, I could like, I that's huge. Could talk about like really long. but it's huge. It it's really huge. is. And it's something that I didn't think of. And I actually kind of talked myself out of it a lot. Um, so with Arbonne, like I went back and forth between like, I don't want to be known as that. I want to be an actor. Yeah. I just, I'm going to get a big TV show that's going to pay me. And I, I was testing for pilots for like eight years. Like wow. it was awesome. And I was getting in the room with, you know, Matt LeBlanc for the spinoff of Friends for Joey. And I was like, this is it. Right. And you know, emotionally, like what that can do to you. Cause you're like signing this huge contract and then they're like, no, it's the other girl or oh. no, it's, 
you didn't get Grey's Anatomy, which I was up for too. Like, and then you're watching like everything go. But if you have my my point of saying that is because if you have some other type of income come in, yeah, the emotional part's gonna be there, but the financial part, you're like, okay, well, I have something to fall back on. Totally. And I can still be an actor. Well, I mean, Meredith, didn't <laughs> having that side hustle, didn't that give you the ability to go through eight seasons of pilot season? Like, would you have, if you didn't have Arbon, or if you didn't have something, the side hustle that you could work whenever, wherever you are, like, mm-hmm. if you were temping or just cater waitering or doing coat checks, yeah. like, would you have been able to do all that you did? I wouldn't. And I still, I still was because like I said, I was dipping in and out of doing Arbonne. I wasn't steadily doing it. Like Mm -hmm. I, like I wish I could have, you were talking about like, I wish I would have done something when I was in Denver. Totally. Like it's, that's the woulda, coulda, shoulda, which I I was like, okay, forget it. You, you know, know. whatever cash. Yeah. I I was still doing, so I was technically doing like three jobs, but I was Mm -hmm. really hustling and you call it a side hustle, but it's like, everything is a hustle in this business. (laughs) Everything and you want to go like, when is it going to taper off? And when is it going to like, I and I, for some reason thought after the, that eight years of like struggling that I was going to get a lead on Broadway and then, oh, now I can kind of chill because now I'm going to get in the doors. Of, yeah. And I did, yeah. but there is another challenge that comes up and another challenge. And I have friends who are celebrities who are like, I don't know if this, you know, if I can get into this film or get into that. I mean, it just doesn't stop. Yeah. And I'm like. And it, it's, I call it levels of frustration because I'm not going to tell Anne Hathaway that like when I was, we were on the set of Princess Diaries, this is like years ago. Yeah. She's like, oh, I so want to star on Broadway or I so want to do something else. It's not a princess role. And I'm sitting there going, I would love to have your career. <laughs> <laughs> but, she, but she, you know, and I sat there and I was like, I was like, no, I totally get it. You have been, you, you've done Ella Enchanted, you've done Princess Diaries oh, and yeah. She's like, there's this, there's this, you know, Ang Lee movie about like these two cowboys that I'm going to do. So I don't know, maybe that'll be something. And that was Brokeback Mountain. And now she's, you know, who she is. <laughs> That's but so funny. I, I always go back to that story in my mind because I think like there, there is this constant role of, mm. of challenges in mm. this industry. And if you can take one of those off the table by having something that is financially like helping you. Mm-hmm. Um, that's not mommy and daddy. So <laughs> like, true, right? You have it's awesome, but I know. You, it, it's, it, it's, there's no, like, I wish there was more of a blueprint for this business. I wish there was more of a, like, do A, B, and C and you will get D. Right. It's just not how it is. And it's just not. I find that the more real you can be about that for those of us who've been in the industry for 20 years, like the more like, listen, this is how it is. Like, don't think that you're going to jump out of school and get your first like big gig you might you might but then it's not uh, you're not going to be doing this forever you're right. going to go like eventually I love it and uh Meredith start, had an amazing blog go to is it is it on meredithpatterson.com is that where your blog is yes yeah and it's called confessions of an actress it's so good it's so good you have to go read it <laughs> it's thank just, you <laughs> it's thank you for your honesty because like you know like you don't hear, what do you call it, like the Facebook life? What do you say about the, how did you say I say it? everyone's fabulous on Facebook. Yes. <laughs> and it's true. I Everybody is. You don't want to like, you know, and I've had some friends of mine who be like, God, it's so, it's so sad. And I'm like, it's not sad. I'm not, I'm not being sad about it. Like sometimes I am sad, but it, okay. I'm just going like, yeah, it's okay. It's because reality. <laughs> we, this is what's crazy. I had, a, I had someone I know lose their job after like a a long time. Like they had like a a job for like 10 years and Mm -hmm. they lost it. They said literally the emotional effects of it have been, you know, not only is it, is it money that they're now scared that they're losing, but Mm -hmm. like they don't, their identification with who they are is with the job. And I'm like sitting there going, we as actors and performers are constantly losing our jobs. And sometimes, for like a long period of time. Yeah. So you're, so then who am I? Like in yeah. the emotional aspects of it, it's like, so that's kind of like where the, the blog came from, like in terms of like confessions, I'm like, I, I gotta tell you, I didn't, I'm not where I thought I would be. And it's okay. I'm still an actor. I'm mm-hmm. still, but I'm, I'm a mom too. I'm, you know, and yeah. I'm also an Arbon consultant. I'm also, you know, mm-hmm. I got, I love helping, uh, I love mentoring people. I mean, I've taught, I've done teaching jobs. I've done choreography. I mean, whatever label you want to give yourself, but 
I find that like blogging about it is a creative outlet for me. It's awesome. That I, don't, I didn't really think I wanted. Like, if you read the post, I'm not a pioneer. Like, I really <laughs> don't. I so don't like to like have to like stuff. So like even like doing like survival job stuff, I'm like, Ugh, I just wish I could sit back and have like a studio system be like you, and I'm gonna give you money to like be in a movie, and I'm gonna do everything for you. Yeah, <laughs> Which, yeah totally. No, but but anyway, the blog is is kind of I, I laugh as I'm writing it. I'm like, who knows if anyone's reading it? But it's apparently, awesome. you like it, so I think <laughs> you know what? Like, I like the reality about it, and I like um, I don't know. That's all about. That's my whole, I guess, purpose is I want people to know. I want to impart knowledge on stuff that I wish I would have known. So like, yes. that's kind of that's I don't know. That's my purpose. So um, yeah, I'm writing to my 18 year old self, basically. I'm cool. like, listen. <laughs> Make that the good title. Maybe I'll do one that's like letter to myself. That's when awesome. I was eighteen. Please listen. Please listen. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so we've talked a lot about like side hustles and like um, Arbon and so sorry, real quick. Um, what is Arbon? Tell people who don't know. Arbon is is a health and wellness company. They sell over four hundred and fifty products. There's a lot. Um, I've used their products for eight years. I've used their skincare, their makeup for stage, which works really well. I've used their nutritional programs. Um, their 30 days to healthy living detoxification cleanse I've used to lose both of my, uh, I have two boys and my baby weight I lost in like three months with it. So it's awesome. It's vegan certified, which is really important. And they're really environmentally conscious. Um, they have a low carbon footprint. They recycle all other stuff. Uh, so that, that for me, like when I first got introduced to it, yeah. aside from the, the products, it was really about the environmental side of it that yeah. really, really kind of struck me and the vegan certification. Cause I, I don't want to have animal stuff on my body or yeah. whatever. I'm not, I'm not, it's funny cause I'm not vegan, like, yeah. but I'm mostly, um, I just don't want the like gelatin and all the animal stuff byproducts in yeah. my lotions. So, I, and I love that, lotions. yeah, because we, I, I feel like as a, as a uh, uh, world, like we're, as, can't think of the right word, I feel like now too, like, um, we're getting more conscious about what we put on our body, you know? So, oh, yeah. Well, what goes, and another thing, this is another side hustle that I do. I actually got certified as a holistic health coach from oh, the nice. Institute for Integrative Nutrition in New York. Nice. And I did that while I was on, quote unquote, maternity leave because I couldn't really work. I was yeah. actually did White Christmas my first trimester. Seriously? And it was like, yeah, and then I, I was like 13 weeks, and I was like, I can't fit in these corsets anymore. So I, I, I did a course with the Institute for Integrative Nutrition to be a holistic health coach, and I incorporate Arbon with that. It's like I kind of ex I exclusively recommend them through that as well. But exactly. it's um, I like to counsel, and I counsel virtually over the phone or like this with Skype, things like yes. that. And I, I help people, body, mind, and soul, kind of deal with. The business side of it, I give them like, you know, techniques and things to do and uh, dietary theories that they can try and detoxification cleanses and all that stuff. I cool. do that as well. But um, yeah, I mean, I, I, I can't remember what your original question was. <laughs> I just love that you did a uh, white Christmas the first time. Yeah, when That's I was awesome. pregnant. That's but awesome. I mean, in terms of Arbon, uh, I, if you want more information, there's so much information online, but my website is meredithbrayley.arbon.com, which I guess you could have a link at your... Totally. And then can you website, spell Brayley for those people listening on the phone? B-R-A-Y-L-E-Y. And that is my married name. <laughs> married name. Um, I, my husband, the Trans-Siberian Orchestra. Just another shout out. Yay. <laughs> um, yeah. And then, so I talk about the side hustle a lot and like how it's a great to have and all this stuff, but like... I also want to mention when you're starting out, whether it's like an MLM multi-level marketing or whether yeah. you're doing like a dog walking business or you're writing books uh, to post on uh, Amazon or you're doing Maybe. Amazon Associates. Yeah, whatever and you're doing. Whatever yeah. you're doing, like it's not say you sign up for like Arbon. The next day you're not going to make enough money for <laughs> for your you're survival right. job, for survival. Yeah. Like yeah. it's the whole, the whole point is um, – creating a survival job that eventually is going to supplement, be able to fully supplement your income. And I think you mentioned it's like building, like when you moved to New York, my first job was a non-equity bus and truck. So like, yeah, I did that too. Really? <laughs> I did two of them. My, oh my uh, God. That two forty-five a week really didn't pay my bills for the first couple of years. No. So, yeah, so, yeah. It's, so that Emma, you know, I praise them and I really do believe that 
and they are very, very important. Like the side hustle is very, very important, but yeah. it, it's not going to pay your bills the next day. So you need to work that along with that temp job or that catering job or that promo job at the, to begin with. And then yeah. once you build your side hustle, then that can become your business is uh, become your supplemental income as well. So I just want to point that out. I don't want people to think, you know, they're going to join like Arbonne or Beachbody and And it's going to be anything that you, that says that you should that that, Oh my God, you're going to join and everything's going to be great. No No. run screaming. There's also, there's a place called the direct selling association, Mm DSA.org, which is kind of like the better business bureau for companies like this. And if you're company you're looking into, that is a network marketing company or whatever is not a member run away. Okay. That is, I'm serious yeah. because it, there is it's a good. lot of like wrong or like bad ones out there, quote yeah. unquote. Um, I really did my due diligence, which is kind of why I dipped in and out of, um, uh, of the MLM because I was yeah. like, uh, I see all these like things that are on like, this isn't, you know, oh, yeah. I don't think this, this is good or whatever, but I always went back to Arbon. arbon has been around since 1981. They're mm-hmm. really, 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 uh, secure. The person who is the head of Arbon used to be, um, She's the one who developed the, uh, she worked for, I think, Johnson & Johnson, but she also uh, worked for McDonald's when they were adding all their, like, fresh, oh, sand, yeah. like, apps and things like that. Like, she's that person. Nice. Uh, and now she works for Arbon. And the person who is a product developer over there used to work for Aveda for a long time. Oh. So they're super legit. Yeah. Um, but again, I don't know about any other ones, but the, the direct selling association would be the place to go that's to find out all the information. And it's online. You can see it all right there. So awesome. that's a big, a big one. But yes, you do not, Thanks. do not sign up and think that you're going to make money because it is, it's, it's just like, um, it's any commission based business. Yeah. Like say you were working at the pottery barn and they were like, Oh, it's all commission based. And, and you're like, Oh, okay. Totally. <laughs> so if you, if, if for some reason everybody you know buys from you the first month, you'll make a great commission, sure. but it doesn't mean that, you know, you have to have repeat customers. You have to, you have to work it for it to work for you is kind of what yes. they say. And it's so, yes. it's so, so true. true. <laughs> you can't sit back and mm-hmm. you can't be like, this is, you know, it's not that. And if you can, then it's not legit. Yeah. So know that. I mean, that's, you are building a business just like you would build any other type of business. Yeah. So, Yeah. Thank you. Okay. So if people want to get in touch with you, um, you're, uh, oh, you have a really good newsletter. Do they get that on your Arbon website? Oh, um, uh, actually that is through my, my, my blog. I, um, I email out people. My email is Meredith Braley at gmail.com and I send out, um, through, I can put you on the mailing list through MailChimp. But awesome. I didn't. I don't think I have a link to it yet. Okay. But I'm gonna get that because <laughs> okay. I really like you. Do have good newsletters. I like, um, and you tell tell about all of your Arbon stuff and like detoxes and stuff, yeah. which I totally need. To, totally need yeah. to lose my baby weight <laughs> I, as well. Here, I have to say, I with two kids, I do it twice a year because I'm like, I need to reset my system. And it's you know, it's something as an actor. Like I constantly say, yeah. you are your product, and if you're not taking care of yourself. Mm-hmm. You know, it's going to show. It's going to show in your auditions. It's going to show you're going to get sick more and all that stuff. So in in terms of my like holistic health coaching, when I when I coach entertainment professionals within the six month program that I do, I always do the 30 day detoxification. And it's not expensive. It's like seven or eight bucks a day Mm -hmm. for them. And if you're not spending that much on like good food, then that's bad. I know. know. Probably. So but anyway, yeah. Yeah, those are all the, the the ways you can get in touch with me through MeredithPatterson.com, okay. through MeredithBrayley.Arbon.com, Meredith Brayley. I'm Meredith Brayley on Facebook. I also have a um, I have a face. I have two Facebook pages, so <laughs> I'm super busy. <laughs> Woohoo! Thank you so much for the time today. I really, really appreciate oh it. You're and you're um, welcome. Yeah, I helped me out there. If I helped one person, I feel happy. Yes, yeah, spread the survival job love. <laughs> the word because yes, exactly. you know we want to tell people stuff that we wish we knew when we started yeah, and thank you for oh my god and thank you for doing this and having this this incredible website and information for all these incredible actors who I want to just be so successful and be able to you know have their side hustle be their main hustle and build their career I think it's yeah. you know it's really important so thank you yay thanks. you're welcome all thanks right. Michelle thanks everybody bye okay. bye, bye.